Centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could imagine. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants have made a home for themselves on a new planet, and the calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper. DJ Knight as Akemba, the Musalian Bio-Priest. Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Mesagi Lightbringer. Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio-Priest. Abria Iyengar as Koza, the Hyenol Fixer. And Ahenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to The Motherlands. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to episode six of season two of Into the Motherlands. Uh, my name is Eugenio. I am your storyteller for this evening, and I'm very, very happy to welcome you back. It has been a week since we last saw you all, and I cannot wait to talk all about it. But before we do that, we should say hello to everyone else who's here on screen with me. Uh, we've been rolling. It's not funny anymore because Michael hasn't been first in weeks, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, so let's go around and introduce our cast, starting with Christina this week. And that's terrible because I know she's in the middle of something. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Christina. So I'm really, uh, I'm Christina Ariel, and I play Captain Silent 919. And uh, update that I just got right now, I also host Star Wars The Higher Public Show. So when this show is over, go watch the new episode, episode three, on StarWars.com and the Star Wars YouTube. Heck yeah. Double the Christina tonight. Y'all should go watch that as soon as we're done here. Uh, also, sorry for calling you out right at the beginning, knowing that you are doing 18 Hold on. things Ooh. at once. Hold on, I gotta do that that Queen's Gambit thing. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> oh, so good, wait, that's so good. Yes, I love it. All right, who is next is number three, that is DJ. Oh hi, it me, I'm DJ. Uh, I play the Kemba, the Salian Bio Priest. Uh, also just a big fan of code. I like code in real life too. His pronouns are he, him, as are mine. You can find me in the all over the internet at this right here, twitch.tv slash DJ Knight and pretty much DJ Knight on all the other things. I'm not as awesome as Christina. I'm trying to be though, because she be killing it, like for real. You are fantastic and on your own personal journey. Ladies first, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I, I think all of you are awesome. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. And I'm still hype about that 200 k though. Yeah, it's more than that now, but we'll talk about that in a minute because next up is a Berea. Hi, I'm Abria Iyengar. I am terrified that uh, I have zero internet right now. Um, so I don't know if I'm coming out. We can hear and... you. Seeing you is difficult, but we can hear you perfectly. Cool. All right. Well, I will be working on that. And I'm playing Koza, your high and fixer who needs to apparently fix her internet. <laughs> this is a good good title for today. All right. Well, while, while Abria... Oh, this is great. I haven't rolled doubles yet at all. Uh, while Abria rolls that, next up is Tanya. Oh, you got hey. lines today, Mike. What? See, it's, Michael got last today. It you you joked about it too hard. Now I know now it's I all, did. Now it's just backwards. <laughs> uh, but hey, I'm Tanya Cypher your high and old blade keeper. Both Invicta's pronouns and mine are she, her. And uh hopefully this week we can keep it together, or at least I can keep it together a little bit and stop looking at the Kickstarter in another monitor. <laughs> No, I definitely don't have it open on my phone so that it isn't taking up monitor space tonight. Michael, last but not least. <laughs> Hello, my name is Michael Sinclair II. Um, I play Eli, the Nisagi Lightbringer. Their pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, him. Also, just thank you for all the motherland's love. And I also said this yeah. before we started, all these people individually are all popping off and they're doing their own thing. It's been amazing and just all here for the squad. So happy to play today. Heck yeah. Yeah, and once again, I'm Eugenio. I use he him pronouns. I will be your storyteller for this evening. All right, well, we can't not talk about it. Uh, so uh, we launched a Kickstarter next week, in case you uh, hadn't heard, uh, and it's it's doing well. You all are incredible. We are currently at $201,801 pledged. 
with 24 days yet to go. Uh, we have we have stretch goals out the wazoo. We got minis, we got pins, we got adventures, we got we got dust jackets for books or sleeves for books. It's it's been absolutely stunning. And I, I can't tell you all how much we appreciate it and how excited we are for what this project is going to get to be. Thanks to all of your incredible support. So uh, info uh, mods will help you out with info uh, in the chat and links and all of that in case you haven't had a chance to see the Kickstarter, but you got just over three weeks left to back the project. Uh, we are we are all systems go full speed ahead for our next stretch goal at 225k. Uh, and I think y'all are going to like that one. Uh, I've liked all of the ones before and I hope you have too. Uh, so that's been amazing. Thank you all. And we're so excited to see where that's going to go. Uh, of course, we do have some other thank yous in addition to our Kickstarter backers that we should uh, mention today. Huge thank you, of course, to Die Hard Dice for embracing our endeavors into the motherlands. Uh, since this is an even number episode, we are going to be giving away another set of Musalian Skies dice tonight. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye on the chat. Mods will let you know when and how to enter. You do have to be present when we draw the winner uh, so that you can respond with your information so we can get those dice to you. But we'll be giving that away today. Of course, you can get if you don't win, you can get your own set of Musalian Skies as well as all sorts of other amazing dice, beautiful dice over at Die Hard's website, dieharddice.com. And if you use code Ikemba anytime in the next five days, it only lasts till the end of May, uh, but if you use code Ikemba anytime in the next five days, you can get 10% off your whole order. So go check out dieharddice.com. Of course, we also want to say a giant thank you to Blue Microphones for bringing us, uh, for getting us our supplies to make sure that y'all hear us and we sound good for you here on here on the stream, on the podcast, and everything else. You can check them out over at bluemike.com to see all that they have to offer, uh, and their selection expands all the time. So go have a look there. We here on this stream, of course, have been uh, showcasing Into the Motherlands using the Cortex Prime system. So our next thank you is to the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. Uh, it has been a joy and a pleasure and an honor to get to use their system uh, as we begin our exploration of the Motherlands. Uh, we're very excited about that. We're giving away also, in addition to the dice, we are also going to be giving away uh, a digital co a code for a digital handbook uh, for Cortex Prime. So same rules as the dice giveaway. Keep an eye on chat. Got to be here when it's drawn uh, and all of that good stuff. But in case you want more information about what Cortex is up to, uh, you should follow their tabletop division on Twitter at Fandom Tabletop, uh, where they update us on things like the Tales of Zadia Dragon Prince RPG, Legends of Grayskull, Masters of the Universe RPG, and much, much more. So thank you so much to everybody over at Cortex. And finally, a huge thank you to Twitch. Of course, our episodes do premiere exclusively here on Twitch, and we are so grateful for them continuing to support us and believe in us and uh, allow us to do our thing. Okay. Is that everyone? I put the kick, the Kickstarters last on my list. I did it first. Now I don't know what's happening. Uh, all right. I think that's all of our ad reads. So what's next? Michael. Now, Michael did it last week. So would anyone else like to kick off our recap this week? I'm sure we'll eventually circle back to Michael, but. Oh yes, there's that hand. There's that raised hand that I live for every week. Do it, Christina. Oh, it wasn't about the recap. Oh. It was in reference to a few minutes ago and you said you have to be here for the drawing. And I was gonna say, are you butter? Cause you're gonna get drawn. Oh yeah, and so last week we had a <laughs> whole really great thing and our crew is trying to get to this volcano to climb it. We've all been discharged from the hospital. Sila has sought therapy and she also had to contend with being on the phone with insurance, which is absolutely fun. Uh, there's so much that happened. Oh my gosh, there was this really intense moment with Kosa and Invicta and Kosa was just trying to help and she was trying to make Invicta a leg, but they got into it Invicta, not Invicta, but you know, yeah, Invicta's like, what are your ulterior motives? And she's like, I don't have any ulterior motives. I'm just trying to be a friend to you. And she's like, but you do have ulterior motives. Why are you being nice to me? But it was really because she was dealing with some inner workings because she has some resentment towards the high for how she was treated when she was younger. So it's really just like more emotional than anything. And Kosa didn't actually do anything, but she's projecting. So also, Ilai came to Sila's room with the other members of the crew and they came to, except for Kosa, who was building a special boot for Invicta and her broken paw foot 
so that she could get around more easily as we climbed the mountain and it was equipped to make sure that she could climb the mountain which is really really cool but i like came cool. and they were really thoughtful uh Tyla was a little unable to take the kindness because she's still trying to figure out emotions but everyone was really great and really kind and there were a lot of really nice moments but it was yeah. also one of those moments where Eugenio said, I really want to get to this mountain before the end, and it didn't happen. It's, you know, I, 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 made, I made that more known last week than I ever have before. It's happened before, and I'm never, I have to tell you, I have, we have never once not gotten to a plot point that I wanted to get to, and I've been unhappy about it, because you all are amazing, and I, I don't think anyone would be upset uh, uh, to not get there last week, because we got all... <laughs> <laughs> all the food and loveliness with you all and the hospital and the everything. So, uh, yes, that was, uh, that was a great recap. Anybody else got details you want to fill in? Oh, all right. Oh, I, I, what do those eyebrows mean, sir? <laughs> I see you, Michael. No, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I mean, that was pretty good. So we're going up the volcano is what we need to know today. You all have come out. You had second breakfast uh, with Shoga and Bertrand and everyone and have begun to make your way out to the foothills of this volcano that's at the edge or just on the outskirts, just outside uh, Mandira. And Shoga told you all that... Uh, there wasn't really, there used to be a fairly frequented path up the volcano because there, oh well, for all kinds of reasons, there are all kinds of legends about the volcano and whatever, but it's been, you know, no one's really, it's been dormant, uh, nobody's gone up there in a long time, so this path hasn't really been used or maintained in a very long time, uh, so it's, you know, just a heads up, it's probably overgrown, they're like, I don't know, like, who knows what kinds of like creatures are up there and like plants. I told you all about the, the, the scalders and who, like, who knows what else is going to be up there. Uh, it'll be like an adventure that I guess I'm going on with you. And, <laughs> and with that, uh, you all can, can get going. Invicta, you've got your, uh, oh, do you have the... You added the, 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 y'all my words tonight, modifications uh, on at the end of last, or before you all left the ship last week, right? Uh, she did. She did it reluctantly, but she knows if she wants to go on this journey, she's going to have to do that or see if someone would be willing to carry her and she will not suffer that indignity. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although the boot is dope. The, the, the boot is dope, but I don't know. Somebody carrying Invicta up would amuse me. I don't know. Uh, oh, it would amuse me greatly. <laughs> but I'm trying to think of who could, I mean, the only person that could probably carry Invicta might be uh, Ikemba. Oh my God, I almost called you Desmond. Ikemba. I'm a flipping android. I can lift tons. You're like pounds. I can lift you. I can give you a piggyback. I can lift tons. You're like pounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, you know what? If Sila wants to carry Invicta, I will not stop her. <laughs> I can't wait to find out when, if and when that becomes necessary. You look too excited. now that you said it, <laughs> no. she's like, nothing else I wanted matters. to do it last week, but then Kosa <laughs> built the boot. I wanted the to boot. do a piggyback. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Uh, our our producer just said the picture has become reality. Well, soon will become reality. I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Well, nobody needs to get carried yet because y'all just walk in. It's all fine so far. You begin to leave Mandira uh, and you can hear uh, sort of the, the morning calls from the dockside. Uh, you know, the fishermen have come in and are selling their cat, their morning catch. And all of that is sort of going on in the background. You see up ahead of you this <laughs> looming volcano uh, mountain. Really, there's not there's not a ton to distinguish it as a volcano. Like Shoga said, it's been dormant for a long time, uh, so there isn't anything to sort of distinguish it 
uh, from any other mountain, other than that you can see as Shoga brings you to the beginning of the trail that leads up, uh, you can see sort of little remnants here and there of the meandering trail, but Shoga was right. It is, it is largely overgrown and unkept, and it looks like it's been torn up by uh, weather or creatures or something in multiple spots. Um, and uh, he sort of looks to all of you uh, before you all start off and say uh, and says, um, "So, uh, are we are we ready?" Uh, yeah. Why are you talking so slow? <laughs> oh, I it's it's still like real. Or I it's like stay up late and like wake up late. This is very like early for me, you know. No, I don't know. Hmm. This is so usually like I I stay up super late because I like I prefer to trip. You weren't asking me to explain it. All right, we can. Oh. Yeah, let's let's go. Uh, and Shoga very quickly begins to begins to head up the trail. Now the way that we're going to do this uh, before we before we switch over to our roll screen, I want you to let you all know. So we're going to play with a new little Cortex mod that we haven't uh, we haven't played yet with yet for this summit. Uh, there is now I'm going to tell you all what the mod's called, and I need you all to let me finish explaining it before you have feelings about it. We're using a mod called the Doom Pool. <laughs> now what did I say? <laughs> Now, all that all that means I myself so i said nothing <laughs> i have concerns <laughs> what that what i'm i we're, we're fixing it up to work here but what what it's gonna what it's gonna mean is uh you all are gonna be summiting this mountain and i'm gonna start with a relatively small pool i'm starting with a pool of i wrote this down i think i'm starting with just 2d6 um and that pool of dice i'm gonna use for all of my tests against you all it's great news but as your summit continues, any time you all roll a hitch, when I buy that hitch from you, I can also take a die and add it to my doom pool. Or alternatively, I can use that bought hitch to step up one of the dice in my doom pool. And I can use those dice sort of like GM or sort of like storyteller plot points. So just so you know, as things go bad, they're gonna get worse and worse. That's what the doom pool is all about. Like you were it. supposed to, you were supposed to tell us something that didn't make us as concerned as we were when we heard the words doom pool. Mm -hmm. that you, I, I feel like when you preface it with like, let me finish explaining before you flip out. Like, yeah, you finish yeah. explaining, mm -hmm. and it hasn't helped in the slightest. I'm expecting doom. I mean, obviously, Abria's with it. Like she's, I like, it. But like <laughs> um, I kind of like. Uh, it can but being alive. So mm. yeah, well, you know, um, you are correct. I phrased that poorly. Uh, what I meant was, feel free to panic when I'm done, but let me get through it first. <laughs> yeah, but also, yeah. what you're saying is yes. now is the perfect time to panic. Uh, uh, yeah, it was now's pretty good. I think Torch HQ would like to speak with you, story. <laughs> Would you all hold, right. please? Would you? Could you uh, hold, please? Um, so, as you all summit, we will we will encounter various obstacles for you all. Uh, the other thing uh, that I sort of have tossed together uh, for the way that we're going to do this is, um, as we summit, there are going to be several different obstacles for you all to deal with. One of you will take the lead on a given obstacle. I would love it if everyone took the lead on an obstacle, but I'll leave that to you all. The rest of you will be able to help as normal by using plot points to create assets. But since we're doing this sort of uh, slightly modified rule set, I'm gonna take away the limitation on who can use the assets that you create. So you don't have to spend two separate plot points to create an asset that the person who's dealing with the encounter can use. Does that make sense? You only need to spend the one. So that's a little, a little help for you all. Um, so that's how that's how we're gonna do this summit. Are we ready for it? No. No. Great. Literally. Let's but, move I mean, let's go. to rolls. <laughs> <or> bowls. <laughs> let's do it.
All right, so uh, we are here and you all begin your summit up. As you start out, the trail is mostly still intact, uh, but very quickly, at, it's pretty steep right at the get-go. And very quickly, you sort of begin to leave the sounds of Mandira and the ocean behind. Uh, and instead, you hear more the breeze and the winds uh, rustling through the low shrubs and the grasses that have begun to grow up the mountain on this sort of lower portion of it. Uh, why don't we, let's see, as you all uh, begin your summit, the first thing that you all come up to is something that uh, that Shoga had had probably pretty explicitly told you might happen, which is simply that there's been a big rock slide uh, that has that has tumbled down and completely blocked the trail. The unfortunate part, though, is that this is at a portion of the trail that's right near a cliff edge. So there isn't an easy, obvious way to get around the the blocked portion of the trail. Uh, climbing might be an option. Uh, you know, there are questions about the stability of the surrounding rock, but that might be an option. You could certainly double back and go a separate way, but that would take you off of the path. Uh, but right now you all are faced with a rock slide, cutting off the path in front of you, cliff or mountain right on your left, cliff drop off to the right, I leave it in your capable hands. Um, I feel like, I feel like, uh, I lie would probably start the lead. So, uh, you said that there sure. was, you said there was like a cliffside and what else out here? Yeah. So to your right, as you're walking up to your right, uh, the, like where the right shoulder of the path is just a cliff, right? It's just a drop off. Cause you're right on, you're sort of riding the edge of the mountain there. And to your left is the mountain, the mountain face, basically. I mean, I feel like I'm going to go towards the mountain face. I mean, and sure. Not the cliffs. And, and climb. Uh, so we're climbing or we're walking up or near a cliff is what you said. You're, yeah, so basically this trail, sorry, I didn't explain this well. So this path that you're on has wound around and is sort of like, I don't know if you've ever, I, I am very specifically, this will tell you where I'm from. I am very specifically imagining the roads that I used to have to drive uh, when I lived in East Tennessee near the Smoky Mountains. You're okay. driving and it's like, the road is there, the road is fine. But if you like, if you deviate to the to one side, you're gonna fall right. off the mountain. If yeah, you yeah. deviate to the left, you're gonna get crushed against the, the mountain face, right? Sure. So uh, the path is the only easy way forward and it's blocked by rockfall. What I are you see. gonna do about it? Uh, I will. I should say you can all participate in the solving of the problems. Yeah. I'm just gonna need one of you to ultimately be the be the lead on the rolls. So one has like blocked off by like rubble and stuff, and then the other one's clear, but we have to climb. Is that what what you were saying? Uh, there really isn't an there isn't a second path. Then we go forward. Uh, I I will lead uh, people forward if they're everyone's okay with that. Um, are are we not worried about uh the stability of the rocks because if those if we climb over and they slide we're gonna die right um, yes that that will... correct okay um, everyone but the catmoral will die admiral admiral we could check thank you for correcting yourself i appreciate it i apologize we could check the stability before we decide to scramble over it Okay, um, do you want me to use Tiwi to do it? Or do you sure. want to do it? I don't, it's very outside. Tiwi's, Tiwi's <laughs> wonderful. You can- Very outside. You can try Tiwi. Okay. Um, then yeah, I want to like pull out Tiwi who's in his little like inert bar form and he kind of wriggles and turns into my little, my little stoat buddy. And oh. I just want to send him over and through and like just Give me a lay of the land and Absolutely. read out to see what's going on here. I got you. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so you're doing this little survey survey scouting mission with Tiwi. Uh, you can go ahead and start putting a dice pool together for that. And we're starting out. We're starting out pretty pretty chill down here. Uh, I just have two d sixes in my pool. So while you put that together, I will roll that difficulty up. Oh, see, okay. it's just a six. Oh, okay, okay, we could be okay. It's okay, it's all, all right. good. 
Um, worries for those who don't trust their team. And I trust Tiwi because I made Tiwi. That makes sense to me, I guess. I um, Have you used that distinction yet? I, I not- love it since you wrote it, but I don't know that you've used it on air yet. I, I think I may have used it like the very first role and then not oh, maybe so. Then. I love it. Um, I'm going to call this a survive. No, it's like a notice because I want to see if we can notice any like anything uh, concerning as we try to like I like that I go like over that. this little pile um it is for sure uh this is knowledge seeking even though exploration it's exploration I'm using the exploration I don't think cool. we I don't think any of us have ever used the exploration value before I'm, it's my highest stat and I'm like oh, <laughs> use it. do it use it uh, and it. of course uh, my familiar and so. of course, TV. Absolutely. All right. Now, before you roll that up. Oh, God, I already uh, rolled that. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. That's okay. No, no, no. It's okay. Uh, we'll go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, delightful. Okay. So, uh, so oh. Tiwi, Tiwi goes on in there and uh, begins scanning, sending you back sort of stability readings. And you can immediately, you immediately can tell that it's it's a good thing that you went and checked this out first because sort of the, there's a really clear and obvious sort of path to scramble over this rockfall. And you absolutely would have gone down the side of the mountain uh, if you had followed that path. So Tiwi takes a few moments to, uh, to sort of survey the rest of the rock fall, he says as he frantically flips through his rulebook, uh, to <laughs> uh, to survey the rock fall to see if, in fact, there is a uh, there is a way over. And it seems that there is. There are. It's not a straight path. So it you know you sort of will have to or TV I guess will sort of have to guide folks. Uh, Good. Smack the mic. That's a good professional streamer uh, to guide folks over this uh, this obstruction. But you do ultimately find a way over with Tiwi. It'll be you know it'll be dodge. It'll be dicey, but but it should hold if you all sort of go you know one or two at a time and don't all scramble over at the same time. Now I am going to buy your hitch. What hitch? I don't see a I hitch anywhere hitch. on I my screen. I don't know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> Couldn't be me. Um, so I just want to make sure the GMA spend. Nope. The Dio. Nope. The Doom Pool increases. Yes. Activates. Great. Instead of adding a complication to the table. Okay. Uh, I do want to say while you're looking mm-hmm. this up, uh, yeah. as TV's like getting all of this data and it's running down. Uh, Coza's left eye on her glasses. Uh, yes. She's gonna very weirdly reach as she's like looking and kind of reading it. She's gonna reach out and try to grab Akemba and like drag him in front of her so he can see it too. And she just looks up and now it's this really awkward eye contact where she's just oh. trying to show <laughs> you what she sees, but it just looks like she's staring at you weirdly. Um, you wanted me to see things? Oh, um, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting information. You can read it because you're good at this. So I figured I would just show you. I'm sorry, I don't have an easier way to show you. So just, okay. just you can just, read it backwards, right? No. Okay, hold on. And I'll take off my glasses and just, here you go. I can read it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and while reading this, it kind of just like passes all the information to the team. Just right, to, uh, right. kind of like, <laughs> Yeah. Kiwi says this, okay. and then just like, <laughs> yeah, and you see this sort of little overlay, and you can see like how much weight the various like pathways can take, and you, yeah. So you all have got that out. So I'm gonna buy that hitch from you, so you get a plot point. Uh, yeah. But I am going to add a die to the doom pool. No. So our doom pool is now at three d six, and uh, what that is about is that as Tiwi is in there, uh, Tiwi. Tiwi gets uh, one of the boulder sort of shifts uh, and and gets uh, Tiwi sort of tr- uh, pinned between two between two boulders. Tiwi is able to get out and get away, uh, but one of one of Tiwi's sensor antennas uh, sort of gets bent and is being a little wonky. You could certainly yeah. fix it if you desired, uh, but you know that one tool that you had now is a, is a little less effective in the moment. And so things are a little more difficult. So I am adding a D6 to our Doom pool. Love it. All right, you know, let's go. Doom pool's warm. Let's I mean, go. Let's get all the Doom in here. You get all the Doom. Doom. I'll fix you. All right, as you continue on, 
uh, around this path, you all clamber up. <laughs> um, Invicta. Yes. Now it's totally possible for you with your adjustments to follow this path and get over here, but it certainly is not gonna be, you know, uh, comfortable or, or, well, I shouldn't say it won't be graceful because I don't know, maybe it will be graceful. I don't know, I don't know Invicta. I do know Invicta, but uh, so, I mean, apropos of absolutely nothing, like how, how do you feel about this moment in Victa and getting climbing over this rockfall? Um, I feel really concerned of, I'm used to being able to spring and leap and climb easily. And now I've got contraption on my leg. So it's gonna be like, if anyone's ever had a walking boot, you know, the weird little shuffle you do when you've got the mm. walking boot. That's her, but imagine a, a hyena leg. Mm. Yes. so she like i mean she luckily she's tall unlike me so she like gets one leg up and then she's like this thing doesn't bend fuck so she's like i don't know if she gets stuck on a branch but she's not like she's like annoyed at at not being able to just like leap and run over this branch and these totally. rocks totally so she's getting over uh-huh Cause it's like, no, she's not saying anything out loud because it just is okay. like super stressed that Invicta's like not doing the cool part. <gasps> cool oh, I part. forgot about the cool part. <laughs> Invicta <laughs> forgot about the cool part. <sighs> Kosa might have to tell her. Cause remember she wasn't really listening to Kosa. Yeah. <sighs> I swallow it for now. Okay. Mm. Uh, all right. So Invicta is, is struggling over, she'll be fine. And she is uh -huh. fine, and on we move. The, the moment the moment has passed, I just wanted to check in. She manages to get over. Uh, it is it is exhausting, but she managed to get over. You didn't have to be carried, so hey, dignity intact there. Uh, Not really, because I feel like Invicta uh -oh. would like tumble over the other side uh, and just kind of lay there in the dirt trying to compose herself. Yeah. But not want to like let anyone see her be totally weak. But she's just like, and what she's saying is muffled because she's like face down in the dirt. Oh, Invicta. She's a sad little, she's a sad, I almost said puppy. She's not a puppy. Um, she's a sad little ball of fuzz right now because she oh. just like flopped in the dirt and she's <laughs> laying there. You know, like when you fall and you're like. I just, I live here now. Mm -hmm. That's where she is. Yeah. That's where she is right I now. I feel she's that just, in my soul. When you trip and fall and you're like, I live there now. Goodness. All right. Well, hopefully not forever. Uh, as the rest of the crew comes over, uh, maybe may maybe helps you up. Maybe doesn't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I see a smile. Admiral Silent Nine One Nine walks over and just grabs like one thumb on Invicta's hand and easily lifts her up off the ground. I I I I, yeah, I, I need that. I've already got a broke <laughs> leg. I, I need the thumb, Sila. Thank you. I just I wanted to make sure that you didn't have to exert too much effort, but <laughs> you know, uh, if you do need help, I am always here and contrary to popular belief, very adept and capable. I know you're capable. I just kind of need my thumb attached to the rest of my hand. I forget uh, sometimes my own strength or do I? <laughs> there it is. Excellent. Love it. It's a good thing I like you. And and Victor's just walking forward, like, ow, my hand, my hand, ow, ow, I needed my thumb. Ow. Are we ready to proceed? Yeah, let's do. So <laughs> So you all continue on down the path. The path eventually uh, sort of cuts inward uh, a little bit. There is a, there's a sort of plateau, uh, maybe about a third of the way up the mountain. So it, it suddenly becomes uh, much easier to get around. It's not this sort of super steep inclined uh, dirt path anymore. It's, it's pretty flat, it's overgrown, but you can see that it's sort of leading you over this plateau into another side of the mountain where you'll continue an ascent. Uh, but as you all are walking across this plateau, uh, which like I said, overgrown, there's shrubs, no real trees, but low shrubs uh, and, and all sorts of, of that uh, sort of foliage around. 
and sh you hear you all hear Shoga sort of gasp and start saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. And he points, uh, and you all see where he is pointing. Uh, in some brush up ahead, there is movement. And very slowly, sort of lumbering out onto this path is this enormous sort of it's shaped like we would imagine a lizard or a Komodo dragon, really. It's that big. It's this enormous sort of lizard thing, but much like a, a turtle or perhaps an ankylosaurus, uh, it has a shell. It has a hard plated shell on its back. And you can see that the shell itself uh, is glowing, question mark? Uh, you can see like flashes of red and orange sort of shifting uh, lights underneath it. And as it takes, you all are still a, a good ways away from it, but as it takes a few steps in your direction, you can already feel the heat that is radiating off of this creature. And Shoga just very quietly and very slowly lowers his pointing hand. Uh, and he says to you all, Volka, I can't believe we're seeing a Volka. They're like super rare and like super dangerous, but also like super rare. Uh, we should give it room then. Um, I'm going to see if there's any sort of um, walk around of where this, uh, you said Volka? Mm -hmm. Volka, V-O-L-K-A. Yeah. If, if there's any uh, way around this Volka and which direction they are walking, if they're walking towards us or whatever, just like out in the woods, if you see something, you're like, oh, I want to take this other way the around. The other way, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, the good news is, since you all are on this wider, flatter area, you actually could go, you really could go around either side of the creature or make it around either side of the creature. The slightly trickier thing uh, is that as you sort of, as you, you know, take a step to the left to look, take a step to the right to look, the Volca does seem to be sort of tracking your movements. It does seem to have spotted you all. It's not, it doesn't look like it's coming after you, right? It doesn't look aggressive, but it is definitely watching you all as you sort of take stock of the, of the area here. Um, he no one might... makes them dangerous. Hmm? I'm sorry, you go, I like. Oh, I was just going to say they may be hungry. Um... For blood? <laughs> that um <laughs> what if it's I, a mom trying to protect its nest that's also concerning and actually uh, a wonderful um guess on what might be happening um if we're going to make a decision we should make it quickly i think we should whichever left or right seems good to everyone we should probably take that and go around the Volca, as you all are talking, begins to make this weird sort of grinding Let's noise. Let's go left. And he <laughs> 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 So much I was not ready for it. <laughs> That's it. There mm -hmm. we go. You are talking. That is enough. We go this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go left. I've been outdoors. I go outdoors a lot. And when you I see mean, those things, you're like, you're not wrong. I have to say, yeah, you all could go around to the left. Sure. <laughs> to the left, Anywhere to the but left. here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. As you all, uh, you, you take this opportunity. In fact, I lie to sort of shuffle everyone off to the left while it is distracting doing this, whatever it is doing. Uh, and you all get, you know, almost, almost sort of even with it, but over to the left. Uh, and presumably at least one of you is keeping an eye on this creature. And you watch as it finally, the, this sort of grinding rumbling uh, gets louder and louder until it opens its maw and out, mm, not shoot, but also not just like drop out, let's just say outcome, these two stones it looks like, but they are red hot. And as soon as they hit the ground, they just scorch 
the grass around it and actually sort of sink in a little bit to the ground. And you can see uh, the char on the ground underneath the grass. These are, these, whatever just came out of this thing are very, very hot. Um, I want one. <laughs> and now that it's done with that, it is able to look up and notice that you all have moved and it begins to come towards you. Not no. super fast, but also it's not doing its like slow, curious lumber like it was Anyone before. Like it's- up for a quick jog. Well, we should maybe just move quickly. <laughs> uh, Admiral <laughs> stops. Oh, Tanya. We're not even using the name anymore. What, the Volga? <laughs> no, you just said Admiral. We didn't even get silent I one nine. <laughs> no, I didn't finish my sentence because Tongue gets lips removed oh. and I didn't want to be rude and over talk. <laughs> oh, you were I being nice that I was being a jerk. I got it. <laughs> good job. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's hey, no, I was bound it. to happen. <laughs> I muted in Zoom and not on my mic. I just kind of, when Ila says, anyone up for a quick jog? And Victor just points at her leg like, excuse? No, that's why I said we should just move quickly. I'm <laughs> Ozo looks incensed. Like, what do you mean, excuse? The boot is dead now. <laughs> and and Invicta like actually covers her ears. Like, I know that we're both high and all, but that's not a note I thought we could hit. <laughs> and we only we're the only two that could hear it. <laughs> I could do no. without hearing it. <laughs> The Volga probably hears it as well. Volga did in fact hear it and is now uh, picking up the pace a little bit and that grinding sound has started again. Good job. Kick it! <laughs> uh, Sorry, I think, what? I think Kick Shoga the is the one that goes, uh, yo, I don't think that's a great idea. Uh, the stories say they're very hot. See, it died. Just not see. It spit out two scorching whatever that was. Whoop, whoop. It could be eggs. We should move while we have this conversation. Oh, I assumed a Sorkin has okay. I want to also let the uh, storyteller know that we are also moving so he doesn't <laughs> assume that we're just, you know, just I got having you. a casual chit chat. <laughs> I appreciate you. I do. All right. So you all are moving. This thing is moving. Uh, and it is, it is clear that it is going to... It is clear uh, that the Volca is going to do what it can to keep up with you all. And it it apparently has some speed. Y yes, <laughs> I see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Silo 919. Admiral Silo 919 mm -hmm. turns to the crew as she's running. She says, do you trust me? Sure. Favorite question. It's time to trust you, yes. Fantastic. And so she comes around and she grabs all of them onto her back, all of the crew, and she yep. takes off at her highest speed. And she's like adjusting the speed as she runs so she can go and run like a car. Heck yeah. All right. So this this sounds she's like going Silas. 35 miles per hour. <laughs> well this under the speed, speed limit, but still fast. Uh <laughs> OK, Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well then this sounds like if that's our if that's our get out of Volca free, uh, then it sounds like this is a silent 919 roll. So let's open it up. All right. Uh, uh, we now the doom pool is up to 3d6. I can still only well, I can still only add up two of them. So you know we're still in a good place. Uh, and while Sila begins to put together her dice pool, I will roll up the difficulty here. And it is a nine. And I did get a hitch and I have to check while you put your, your pool together. I got to check and remember if there are different rules for hit on my uh, opportunities. So what you putting up, Sila? Oh, okay. So I'm going to use duty because it's my duty to protect my crew. Oh. I lied. I'm going to use power. Oh, okay. Because as a philosopher once said, <laughs> no one man should have all this power. So I'm going to use power and then 
I looked at it and it said I was looking at fight and I was like, oh, I wonder if there's flight and I was <laughs> it's fly oh. instead. So I was like, I'm gonna use fly as in fighter fly. Fly. Response. <laughs> we have always said be creative. That is a new level of creative, but <laughs> so I'm gonna use fix to fix the situation and I'm gonna use do it right or get out of my way. All right, so it's a nine to beat uh, and you don't have any, oh, wait a minute, hold on though. You have a, do you have, a, do you have stress left? What's your, what's your corrupted stress at now? I think we, after you got um, out of the hospital, it came down something. It, it a six was or a eight? six. Is it a six? Okay, let me, let me, I'm just gonna roll one more D6 cause I do need to add that to my pool. So uh, it was a one, four and a five that I had. And that is a six. So we're going to go six and five. So it's 11 to beat is actually your difficulty. <laughs> I always assume that you all have hit the roll button. It's just taking a minute to get to my screen. But the moments are so tense right now. And I love it. <laughs> Look at that 14. With a, Won't he no do it? Hitches. There you go. So wildly, uh, Sila, Transformer Sila 919 just like grabs y'all, uh, hulks out and speeds off at, at a solid 35 miles an hour uh, away from the Volca. And and there you go, you get away. Uh, Shoga sort of seems relieved that you all didn't resort to violence for this rare and possibly endangered creature. Uh, and, and you've made it across the plateau and can continue your summit of the mountain. Up you all continue for a little while. Uh, what happens next? Ah, and then the path runs into, so sort of similar to uh, the rock fall, but sort of the inverse. Uh, you're back to mountainside, cl uh, cliff drop off and path, but this path has collapsed in and has filled completely with water. There's now like a, a sort of, it almost looks like a, a crater, like something struck here. Uh, and it has filled with water, which is not a big deal, except that the water sure does appear to be bubbling and steaming and boiling from the heat, the geothermal energy from the interior of the volcano, which is apparently venting here at least enough to superheat this pool. The pool is about 15 feet across. It's a big wide pool of boiling water right in the middle of your path. Uh, is there any um, flora on the other side, like a tree or like, actually I would probably need some sort of tree or something that stable uh there are you've seen these they're not exactly trees uh but they are these really thick stemmed uh bushes shrubs uh and while you were running across or while well while Sila was carrying you across the plateau um you saw one of them that it looked like maybe the Volca had like ripped up or something and you you could see uh back on the plateau that these things roots are long uh and extend deep into the rock around them usually to search for water so they're they're small but they're pretty they're pretty sturdy they're pretty well anchored is there one on our side as well uh, you know, there's one on the other side, and if somebody wants to spend a plot point to create an asset of there being one on your side, I would be fine with that. Uh, I'll spend it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Koza, uh, Koza looks around. Uh, I like you're looking for this thing. Koza looks around, and actually, there is. Oh, go ahead. Change I actually mind. might not need you to use your plot oh, point okay. because we might need Tiwi for this one. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll use uh, point. whatever you need. Okay. So uh Invicta looks around uh and finds finds sort of around uh up over a little uh a little ledge. There's one that you can tie to there. Um yeah, so that's one plot point to create the to create the asset. The asset is at a D6. You can spend more plot points if you want to step it up. You can spend one more if you want to step it up to a D8. Uh, but anyone can use it. So, Eli, if you're going to take lead on this, you can use it if you need so it. So, I'm going to make like a monkey's fist or monkey's ball. People call it different things, but it's a sailor thing with like a rock in the middle. I use rope to 
Mm-hmm. I guess that's my plot point. I'm going to use my my stuff, my general like Heck rigging, yeah. climbing gear. So I'm going to wrap a, 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 ro- a rock with some rope all the way around. And then um, I'm going to toss it over to the other side, uh, okay. cl- close to where that that maybe anchor point is. And then uh-huh. I'm going to say to uh, Kosa, Kosa, does Tiwi awesome. know how to... Um, tie a bowling. Maybe I can. It's try um, it. It, it's well, I can. I explain. don't know what that is, so you're gonna. Have to try <laughs> yes, uh, the the most simple way, and I'm gonna. I have a rope on this side, so I can kind of show. But I also mm-hmm. say, um, it's the uh, rabbit comes out of the hole, and then it goes around the tree, back down into the hole, and back out. Um. But that's how you do this. And if you can instruct Tiwi to do it, um, it can really help us out here. Okay. Um, I'm sure you can. You're right. You're okay, right, guy? And I kind of like, I'm just sort of like trying to like physically unbend one of the little arrays that's just kind of like jammed up. Like it's not, it's not not broken. I just want him to look normal. Like it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And his, uh, his little, his little, uh, let's say injury won't affect this particular uh, mission. So that's fine. Uh, but in order for, uh, so in this case, this is an asset that already exists, but in order for I to be able to use it, we will need a plot point for that as well. I'm happy to spend it. All right. Okay, you have all of the assets. We'll give you, if you're spending a plot point on your rope, uh, you can create that without spending a plot point, but you wouldn't have a die for it. But if you want to have another D6 in your pool that is the asset of the rope, you'll need to spend one. But otherwise you've got uh, anchor point at a D6 and Tiwi at a D6. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna use my own personal because you know I ain't Will Smith, but I'm a hitch probably, so I don't want more hitches. That's fair enough. <laughs> so give me a second. <laughs> Excellent, I love it. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, bah, 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 bah. yeah, put your pool together uh, and you can add up to two additional D6s. For... Okay. Actually, uh, Koza, Tiwi is what on your sheet? D6 or D8? Yeah, uh, Tiwi is a, t- a D6. Okay, great, that's what I thought. I just wanted to be sure. All right, so... uh, meanwhile, let me, Roll up the difficulty. Uh, Silent 919 didn't hitch. Nothing bad happened there. So we're still at 3d6. Y'all, not I'm not doing great tonight. Wonderful. The, the oh, time for it. Completely okay with that. So seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah seven. Yeah. You didn't have Except any stress, you. right? I keep forgetting to look at that. Uh, no, because okay. I, 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 I stepped them down. That's from... right. That's right. Hanging out. Um, All right. So I'm going to use uh, We Are a Community because this is getting the squad or team across the um, bubbling liquid, which is yes. doesn't look fun. The the actual pool of doom. Pool of doom, so right. Somebody said that. Too chat. warm, too hot. Um, <laughs> I'm going to use survive because this is uh, Eli's survival skills. Absolutely. Um, and I'll probably just use eight as well because it it's their knowledge. They know how to do this. And then how do I add additional die to So you should be able to, the one week, I don't have one of y'all's sheets open. You, the, there's a little die, a plus sign oh, yep, and a die it. in the top yep, right. Yep. You got it? It's just, okay. yeah. It's I always open one of y'all's sheets so that I can answer those questions. I was I'm like, adding, oh, nobody's asked any in weeks. It's fine. I'm adding two more of those. Because you can, of, it's up as many as you want. Uh, well, if you one was from want. Kosa and one was mm-hmm. from Invicta, correct? Invicta, because correct. I had to, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, bubbling liquid is the time to do this. because. I bu- mean, I don't think you're wrong about that. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to roll. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Mm. okay. Success. We do have a hitch. I know, uh, but and I will be I will be stepping up one of my D6s to hey, a D8. One hitch Michael will gladly take. Honestly, yeah, right? that's low for right? me. I will not complain. <laughs> okay. So uh as you're going, so what is the plan for for uh for crossing? What is the method of crossing once everything right. is? So set up the that safest you're way to cross for people, uh of different athletic builds and ability normally uh there's two ways uh you can either do like an elbow overhand and knees thing overhand or you can literally be on top of the rope but it requires a little bit of ab strength and like and balance to kind of 
shimmy your way across with this weird like leg ankle lock thing so those are i i get on first and illustrate both methods uh to say like you can you can either go underneath like this which doesn't require as, as much probably strength and, and talent but is a little bit worrisome because you're upside down or you can do it um this way uh requires a little balance and it feels nice because you're right side up but um this is my plan love it and are you gonna go first last yes Otherwise, i will go I first like... I will okay go to right. show got i it. will go for it got it um it's a little it's uh Perhaps, well, I don't know. I don't, you know, I should stop making uh, emotional decisions for you characters. Uh, you can decide how Eli feels about the fact that, are you going over or under? I'm going over, Eli would go over. Great. So Eli's going over uh, and is, you know, very good at it because this is what they do or what they did, right? When they were working rescue missions and stuff like that, weird <laughs> positions like this. So they're, they're no stranger to this. Um, Unfortunately, as they are crossing, uh, mm -hmm. there is a, a particularly large sort of uh, air pocket that bursts, uh, and Eli does get ever so slightly uh, uh, scalded by the by the bubbling water. Uh, so just a D6 of injured. You can take another sure. plot point, because I'm buying that hitch to, to step up the pool a little. Um, and, it, you know, it stings, but you're okay. You get across, no problem. Uh, and everyone else uh, sort of sees that that happens and so tries their best to to watch out for, okay, for big okay. developing bubbles. This is fine. I'm okay. It just stings a bit, but uh, onward and forward. Now, I have to... Oh, go ahead, Koza. Oh, no, go ahead, guy. All right. I do have to once again... I, I do, you know, I don't mean to, to circle back to the same thing every time, but... Um, Invicta? <laughs> yes. What's your plan? Uh, I was Jimmy. just gonna, hopefully if, I mean, if Silas still wants to carry me, I, I ain't gonna stop her, but. For what it's worth, the the under method that Eli mentioned probably would be okay with a, with a slightly, you know, incapacitated leg. Cause all you really have to do is hook it right? And then sort of pull yourself. Uh, but I, I can't resist finding out exactly how Invicta deals with the, uh, the, the, the machine on her leg. Um, also, it's y'all's fault because you said Sila was going to carry, so now I just have to ask every time. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross legs, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the boot and have it jet me across. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's so cool. Wait, take a plot point. That's dope. Uh, <laughs> so you get yourself in position. I don't know why I'm doing it. You get yourself in position <laughs> and then just fire thrusters and go like zip lining across this rope. And what's yes. funny, a slight yes! tangent. A slight tangent. <laughs> I went to Fort Knox and I actually did this IRL. <gasps> I got in the middle and fell in the river. Oh no, no. <laughs> oh no, it was hilarious. I was fine. Good, good. But the ladies that were watching me were terrified because I hit the, like I hit oh, the ground and it was like such a loud slap on the water. Yeah. Oof. And then somebody like, they fished me out and I was harnessed safely. So it wasn't like I went careening down the river. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they fished me out and I started laughing. And that made me think of <laughs> I like if, if I'd fallen in, I would just start laughing. <laughs> oh no. Amazing. If it wasn't boiling water, I feel like this would be a delightful moment, but I, I, yeah. oh, I would scream laughing and then while I would laugh. There you go, there you go. <laughs> All right. I, I'll find it during the break, but I actually have a framed photo of them after I've been fished out of the water. Oh my god! Uh, it can because uh, Silent Number Nine. Anything we should know about your crossing of the of the Pool of Doom? It's Admiral. That that voice from above doesn't often use titles. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to get across. Yeah, I, and this is just sort of narrating how what it looks like when you get across, because um, uh, Eli has now succeeded on the role, so y'all will get across fine. But if there was something in particular, I mean, because Invicta was <laughs> so descriptive, <laughs> if any of you all have any uh, 
any any details we should know about before we before we finish up at the pool. Yes, do it. Hey, Kimba, uh, I'm sorry. You were gonna. You want to go first? No, you go. I'll wait. Okay. Uh, Kimba, just knowing that this is kind of a tough situation, just imagines uh, the squids again, and he just oh. remembers that he was able to pull power from a place that he didn't really have access to normally. So he just kind of crouches mm-hmm. and just puts his hands on his thighs and just wills that energy, just wills energy into his thighs. His bio priest, right? So he's just like, (laughs) there's a light orange glow and he's just like holding over his thighs and just, you can do this. He looks, he crouches back. He takes two steps and just leaps. (gasps) And just is in the air. And then when he hits the ground on the other side, he just kind of puts his fist down and just looks up and just, I have the feeling I could do that. And just kind of gets up, brushes himself off. Uh, shall we? You just hear like a tiny wow from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my God. That was like such a bionic man move. Yeah. Quite All bad. right. Them thighs. Uh, yay. Hey. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. God. So uh, that Is happens. That? Woo. Yes. Woo. Oh, where's my fan? <laughs> uh, <amazing>. Sir. <laughs> Solid 911. It has an ally. Everyone is across. Uh, Koza, uh, was there anything you wanted? Uh huh. Okay. You want me to go and then you can go? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Koza is screaming happily uh, that Invicta used the cool boot and then is just almost silent because of how cool Akemba was. And she's like, well, okay, now I have to do something cool. Oh, spider legs. And I'm gonna pull out the spider legs and use them to like build a ton of tension between her to like make like almost like a three point stance. Oh, interesting. So she can just walk like a tightrope. <gasps> across yes. so she's walking across the top and the, like the legs are like securing her to it and pulling it taut so she doesn't have to like worry too much about her left or right balance i love this i i imagine it's a little horrifying to yeah watch, oh though. it doesn't look great yeah no <laughs> i mean that is some that is yeah mm-hmm. yeah love that <laughs> all right silent 919 so emerald silent 919 <laughs> sees the crew gracefully make their attempts to go across. And she stops and she puts her hair up in two ponytails. And they start to flail out and and they start to make like helicopter noise. Like each of the weaponized braids, she's now like formatted to run like a little wing fans. So if you think about it, it looks like the scene in Spy Kids when Gertie starts floating up in the air because they're like, Pigtails started spinning. <laughs> Looks like yes. that. Yes. Right at this moment, yes, yes, yes. just so, like, what, why did I even bother with the rope? <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I, I, Invicta and Koza wouldn't have made it across without that rope. <laughs> um. Wow. All right. So we have braid propellers. We have we have bionic man leap. We have the spider queen. Uh, fantastic. You all. You extra lovely humans uh, are on the other side uh, of the of the pool of doom uh, and it's getting as you as you move away from it and continue sort of spiraling up uh, you're now a little over halfway up the volcano and as you move away from the pool it doesn't get a whole lot cooler the breezes are nice but it's getting warm up here which is so sort of surprising because according to Shoga, this volcano has been dormant for a long time, which of course doesn't mean that there's no, you know, activity down there, but for it to be affecting the temperature on the surface this much, this far from the caldera is surprising, is all that I will say before we head to break. 
We'll be right back in about five-ish minutes, folks. They do still have a little ways up the mountain, but we are going to take a quick break to stretch, get some water, uh, take a bio, whatever you need. You all take care of yourselves as well. And we will be back uh, in just about five minutes. So don't go too far. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, we are 60% up the volcano and have 40% to go. Lots more opportunities to make this doom pool a little more exciting. Uh, and in fact, the uh, as you all continue to move up the mountain, this rising heat, uh, now that you're a little over halfway, is going to step up another one of the dice in the dice pool on its own. So we are now at two d8s and a d6. Maybe make that mark so I don't forget. Here we go. All right. So you all have passed over the pool of duality. You first passed over the rockfall. You then made your way around the Volca over the pool of doom, which is definitely what we're calling it now. Uh, and uh, and you've made it up to uh, to another sort of slightly wider. Uh, path area, so it's a little more comfortable. You you aren't quite so hemmed in by the uh, the cliff and the mountainside. It's not it's not a big plateau. It is still inclined, uh, but it's a little wider, a little more comfortable. And as you all come around a, a bend, you see uh, another small, much smaller. It's not blocking the path, but another small tumble of rocks and boulders, and there is a person under, or well, I should say, uh, very Wicked Witch of the West or East style legs sticking out from underneath these boulders. How are we? Um, Likely, I should point out, since uh, since all of our cultures are, are fairly, uh, fairly visually different, this does appear to be a Musalian. Um, right. It's probably not Misajai because you don't see any symbiote markings, and obviously, you know, not furry, not planty, not not uh, synthetic. So, um, is there any blood on the ground? Uh, not not immediately obvious. No, I mean there may be some under the rocks, uh, but at a glance, no, it doesn't look like it. Ew. Are we gonna do something? Uh, I don't know that we can do a lot for them. I don't understand. They're probably dead, Coast. No, I understand. Why aren't... I'll go check. And I'll go over. I believe I'll yeah. walk along with this. Sure. Uh, so Kemba and Koza, both of you head over to, uh, to the legs. Um, and as you get right up near them, uh, the right leg sort of almost like it's a reflex, uh, just sort of twitches. Um, and, and, and you can hear, uh, both of you can hear underneath the rocks, the, the shallowest, raggediest breathing. Not dead, please help him, please help. All right. And start pushing Akemba. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. And uh, Akemba kind of leans down and mm -hmm. just kind of tries to figure out if they're like gravely injured. Obviously there's a boulder on top of them. So he imagines that's the case, but uh, he's trying to figure out what's going on. So he just kind of like reaches down and tries to like gauge. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you can, uh, you know, uh, sort of a very basic level sort of diagnostic type, you know, you check the, the vital code and all of the things. And, and what you actually see is that it looks like uh, the first injury that sort of stands out to you, Akemba, as you sort of uh, both look with your eyes and with your bio pre senses, uh, is burns. Uh, like these really, not small, but sort of circular burns that that go kind of deep there's three of them uh on this person's torso which you can't see because it's covered by boulders um you also get the sense that there is a head injury uh but there aren't Thanks. any yeah right but surprisingly there aren't any broken bones it actually looks like maybe the fall isn't the primary or the the boulders are keeping this person unpinned but weren't maybe the primary injury Mm -hmm. So, with that in mind, uh, if the boulder isn't the primary injury, uh, as much as Kemba wants to help them feel better, like it's not going to be all that useful with the, with the boulder in the way. So yeah. he kind of looks back. Uh, is there? Goes out. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that you have, maybe with Tiwi, that could help us move this boulder? Tiwi's not very strong. Emerald! 
And I just turn back and yell for Sila. <laughs> Sila walks over to where Akimba and Kosa and the boulder are, and she just holds her hands out, picks up the boulder, and tosses it <laughs> off to the side. <laughs> Dust her hands. I'm gonna regret giving y'all such carte blanche, but I'll take it. Uh, I'm yeah, a well, solver. and. And the boulder isn't the isn't the primary problem here, so that's no problem. So yeah, Sila, you're able to move that away, uh, and you can now see you and Ikemba and Koza, um, and of course Isla and Invicta. If you want to get closer to to have a look, you can now see the three burn marks, uh, and you see sort of sitting on this person's chest, uh, like embedded in three places, are familiar looking, now slightly cooled little rocks. I don't want them anymore. <laughs> you don't want a Volca pet anymore? Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, they come from its gizzard. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that you can see is sort of the main the main injury. There is, you can see now, there's a little bit of a, of a head wound. There's a little bit of a scalp laceration. There's, I mean, there's a lot of blood now that the boulder is gone, but that's just because head wounds bleed, not because actually there's a ton of, of head trauma. And then with that acknowledgement of the head wound, the Kimba just no words, bends down, puts his head hand over uh, mm-hmm. the head of this Mosalian and over the body where the, the nearest issue is, uh, where the burn marks are, and attempts to render aid. Yeah. Um, I should mention now that we can actually see this person as we put this together and roll up that uh, that she is a uh, an older Musalian woman. Uh, she has uh, jet black hair, but the tips, the ends of it, uh, and you're not sure if it's if it's uh, natural or dyed, but the ends of it have this sort of beautiful salt and pepper gray that goes about two inches up her up her hair. Um, the, you see that she has old scars, but these sort of claw like. Uh, scars across her, what is this, left cheek. Uh, and uh, and and she is where, this only stands out because so much of the rest of her is pale from, you know, shock and blood loss, but she has on this bright red lipstick. Uh, and now we can roll dice. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna roll this to set the difficulty. We are at two D8s and a D6 in the Doom Pool. And mm. that came out at an 11, so, you know, a little bit more than I've been at, but not not too high. You put your pool together. Let's see what we got going. All right. So I'm looking at a D8 because life is logical. This is a rough situation and Definitely. Kimba wants to help. This is a fix because sure. someone's in pain. He's trying yeah. to fix it and knowledge because this is not the first time that a Kimba <laughs> has tried to heal someone who is in kind of dire straits. Definitely. Definitely. I like it. Let's Rolling. do it. Hey, look at that. No hitches, beat my number. So you are able to uh, to stabilize this woman uh, and her eyes sort of dimly flutter open. She regains a bit of consciousness enough to sort of look around uh, a little confused uh, and just say, thank you. It's no worries. Um, how did you find yourself under this boulder? Uh, she, uh, she sort of smirks, uh, and she has, she is also now that she's conscious, she's obviously weak, but she's conscious and she's sort of checking the burns and she, you know, as she sort of touches them, but she finds where they are. She actually manages the, she takes that one stone that's still really in there and pulls it out, uh, and sort of tosses it to the side. And she sort of nods as you're talking at and, and after you ask her the question, she sort of smirks and she says, um, too close to a Volca. After seeing the Volca we saw earlier, I completely understand how that could be a problem. Well, you got away better than I did. I ran and took a tumble. Oh, hopefully this helps you to not stay tumbled. Please, let me help you up. And she accepts the help. She gets up. She's, you know, it takes her a minute to sort of get her equilibrium, but she's, she's okay. Uh, you have, you have definitely, you know, you could see there was a mild concussion. And, you know, I think some of what you also did uh, was, uh, you know, deal with the burns enough that they aren't going to 
severely hamper her. So she's she was she's a little unsteady for a few minutes, but she's up and she's ready. And she sort of she looks around to all of you and she says, ah, "Thank you all. Uh, are you heading to the summit?" Uh, yes. You? She uh, she nods and she says, uh, "I I might I come with you." Why? You almost died from hot rock. <laughs> Go home. Uh, lass, if I if I turned back every time something came after me, I'd I'd never get anywhere. Um if that's true, I have concerns for you. Just, uh, life at sea is not an easy life. Apparently it's not any easier up on a volcano. Oh. Uh, Okay. And this person wearing loose fitting or tight fitting clothes? Uh, she is in. I, I would say they skew towards the tighter fitting. Uh, she's not in a bodysuit, but you know she's not wearing wizard robes yeah. or anything. Um, with your burns, you might want to. I have an extra pair of clothes. You might want to change it to something more loose, or else it'll get constricted and infected. She uh, she looks down uh, and she you she can see and so can you that one that she just pulled the stone out of uh, some of the some of the material of her clothing has also sort of melted there uh, and so she sort of looks at that and she says I this is going to hurt and she uh, she sort of thanks you Eli and, and accepts the change of clothes and she goes around to bend and you can just hear like sucking noises and like her with her mouth not not that that's gross no no her just being like <sighs> and sort of occasionally letting out like a, a very quickly muffled uh, yelp of pain uh, but eventually she comes back and you would never know to look at her face that she had just you know picked melted fabric out of her uh and she comes around she's she's in the looser clothes and she she sort of says well two two now i owe you yeah. did we get an answer about what you're doing uh she says oh uh, <laughs> no i uh, well i was hoping to to get to the to the summit to, to see the views you know see the the ocean uh, as a whole, and um, and also, uh, are you lying? She she looks at you, Koza, and she says, "Yes." Okay. I yes yes I am. Okay. Uh, she says, um, "We came up here to get our hands on some Volca shells." Mm. Ah. We. Uh, yeah, there were uh, me and two of my crew, but uh, well, they weren't quite as fast as I was. Oh, you were barely fast enough. And for the record, everyone else thought you were dead. So you owe me also. Ah, so three now. <laughs> quite the debt I'm racking up. Uh, I'm going to ask Shoga because he's uh -huh. still with us. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. <laughs> Shoga. Is this a practice that's accepted around here, or is this one of the causes that might be leading to our Volca friends diminishing in numbers? Uh, and we're sort of sort of okay with this. We're like whispering to each other. Is that the yeah, idea? yeah, that, okay. yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I figured. I just wanted to be sure. Uh, and Shoga Shoga says, "No, whoa, like no. That's. I mean." Honestly, like, I don't even know if there are like official rules about it because like everyone knows that Volca aren't seen very much. And like to go after one is, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I lie. Like that's, that's pretty messed up. I mean, she seems grateful and nice enough, but like, that's pretty messed up. Thank you. See, this is why we bring you. You're, you're full of wonderful information. So, so glad that I can help. It's been, it's been quite an adventure so far. You have a story for later. <laughs> I, that I do, yeah, totally. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, I don't believe, did we get your name? And I'm talking to the person that we just helped out. 
Yeah. Uh, and she, she very, uh, she very happy and confidently sticks out her hand. Uh, and as she turns to you, Isla, you just, you catch, uh, she sort of turns towards the sun and you catch that her eyes have this sort of uh, striking, almost red, red sort of, uh, they are not red eyes, but like there's a, there's a glow to them when she looks at you. And she just says, um, I, Dinzon Valley, at your service. Uh, is that our first and last name or all one name? Uh, so I, uh, my apologies. No, uh, my name be Dinzo and my family name be Navali. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I don't believe we have all the time, but isn't the thing that you're doing in collecting these Volca shells not quite helpful for the Volca population? She uh, she actually starts to sort of chuckle and she says, uh, nay, nay, they clearly don't need any help from anyone. And then she sort of realizes that you are not making a joke about her escaping from a vicious creature. Uh, and she she has the grace to look a little, you know, chagrined. Uh, and she she just nods and she says, uh, nay, no, it is, it, it is not helpful. Uh, but uh, but they do they do make uh, they do make lovely ornaments that uh, some folks will pay top dollar for. They also leave lovely scars, and obviously you probably shouldn't be doing this at all. I uh, if I hadn't learned my lesson from the Volca this time, I think it'd be in ye all that have come to to save me. Might you have, uh... should head back to town. I think that would be best for everyone. Aye. Aye, mm -hmm. I'll let the crew know we won't be, we won't be taking any more Volca shells as cargo. Would you happen to have any shells that you haven't already taken off of any Volca? Uh, she says, uh, my crew has, uh, I think, two left aboard from previous excursions. Uh, but none with me now, no. Okay, so the Volga that they have, the two that they already have, have already been removed, and that's from prior situations. Uh, nay, nay, we we don't uh, we don't remove the shells until the sail keeps them fresher. I would recommend leaving the Volga out here in the nature, mm. and returning to town. Uh, she was super on board; like she felt like she had learned her lesson. And this, though, sort of gives her pause. Uh, and she uh, she looks at you, Akemba, and she says, um, well, I suppose I paid me one back to him for deciding not to take him anymore and could pay me one back to ye and return those two to the wild, yeah. And then she turns to you, Koza, and she says, and what would you have of me? Um, what do you ha have in your pockets? She laughs just like that. She just <laughs>, laughs uh, and like sticks her hands in her pockets and like pulls them out. She's got, I, I don't, she's got like probably a credit stick in there. And uh, you know, uh, is there anything in particular that, well, it's Koza, so no, of course not, but. <laughs> yep, there you go. Yeah, um, I think what she has that is sort of, oh, you know what she has actually is she has a few, uh, a few totally cooled off Volca stones. Uh, because they they make good sort of uh, like sling bullets or like just to throw to scare off creatures. Uh, so she's got because they're they're pretty heavy. So she's got I don't know four or five of those in her pocket. Yeah, I definitely like wave off the credit stick like oh, I can't have money. <laughs> yes, yes. Rocks. And I just put it. I start loading them into my little cargo pockets. I love it. She like she hands you three of them and then like takes two and starts putting them back in her pocket. Here, I will take those ones and you can uh. have the hot ones that almost killed you. <laughs> she nods, hands you those two and <laughs> goes over and starts like blowing on the one that she yeah. pulled out of her to cool it down. She says, um, well, this has been um, interesting. Yes, safe journey, Stimzo. And to ye. All five of six of seven. God, how many of you are there? Seven of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, and she will start heading down, back down the volcano, back down the mountain. Leap travels back to town. She said goodbye, but she never told me hello. <laughs> manners, Sela just updated her manners program. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> We're never hearing another hello from Sila 919. Yes. <laughs> Only goodbyes. <laughs> uh, I love it. Denzo. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right. That was Dinzo. Uh, so Victa, that is why you always check a corpse. Cause sometimes they have stuff on them and sometimes they're not a corpse. <laughs> they're, oh, what's in, in that order? Hold on. Hold that on. She pulled her capital one. What's in your wallet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, <laughs> woo. That was great. I needed that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something and that just killed whatever thought was in my head. What's funny is that I can hear it in her voice now. Just like, what's in your wallet? <laughs> thing all flashing, the eye thing. <laughs> oh, God, yes. oh my God. Kosa is, uh. is Isabella from Dragon Age 2. Oh, yes. I don't get that <laughs> reference, but it feels appropriate. I love it. I'll tell you later. Yeah. I love it. Uh, all right, continuing on up, you all are, are getting much, much closer. You're much closer to the caldera than you are to the, to the you know, to sea level at this point. Um, excuse me, so upward you continue and you can see up ahead after a little, war, a little more journey, you can see up ahead that the path, uh, you're so close, but before it gets to the summit, the path seems to go through a cavern inside the mountain uh that that you can only see a few feet and then the path uh, the cavern sort of twists and turns and you you can't see too much further ahead um and shoga sort of gets gets everyone's attention and says um yo remember the 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 both shoga and i have forgotten what they're called the scalders that's what they're called the scalders that i told you about yeah this cave full of scalders just like smiling, not sort of, Shoka has clearly not 100% realized what that means for your journey. He just thinks it's kind of cool. You sound very excited by the prospect of imminent danger. Is this normal? This is, oh, no, it's fine because as long as we don't have to go through, oh, right. Now you're caught up. Yep. Yep. Hmm. So back hmm. down? No. No. Okay. I well, it was worth asking, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're afraid, you can wait here. It's um, helpful to have a guide, but um Eli does a really good job. Oh, and you shouldn't have to almost die from hot rocks or whatever a scalder is if you don't want to. What would Shoga do? No, I think Shoga's, I mean, Shoga wasn't super thrilled about coming up this volcano, but now you all are like four fifths of the way up. <laughs> and like Shoga is ultimately like an adventure seeking treasure hunter under the sea. So like, yeah, he's gonna keep going with y'all. <laughs> uh, since, since Invicta wasn't there when they met Shoga, uh -huh. and she didn't really get a good explanation of why exactly this dude is there. <laughs> because he's okay cute. neither did he <laughs> oops uh shoga yeah yeah what exactly are you hoping to get out of this trip with us he says literally like nothing like i just came along because i got asked to but like i i'm perfectly like this is almost higher than i've like ever been are okay. you sure not like sorry I like elevation <laughs> i mean you know <laughs> Cause I was like, I, you know, the the hind will have some herbs that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no, believe me, I know all about them. Oh really? Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to trade some secrets when we get back down this mountain. I love that, and do you know why? Cause like I want more secrets about hind herbs, and also cause that means we're gonna make it down. Oh. No one said we were going to make it down and I don't have secrets. That's not my forte, but I have experimented and I've, I've done some hydroponics, but assuming we all live through this. <laughs> this, is, this, is, 
roller coaster of emotions for sure. Just like it's truly the slap and tickle. Like I don't know what's happening here. Ow. I love some heart. I got a stitch in my tickle. side. I'm not sorry. Say that slap and tickle. Oh yeah, the, the old slap and tickle. We need somebody yeah. just doing that. What's more for the audience, DJ? Um, <laughs> nope. Terrible. Nope. Terrible. Okay. Uh, woo. Nope. Phrasing. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, God. That's what I'm saying. Chill out, Archer. <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, all right. So if you all were to approach the cow, <laughs> sorry, just all came back one more time. Uh, if you all were to approach the cavern, uh, you would see uh, live and in living color, the things, the plants that, that Shoga described to you. You can see um, a few mounds of these really brightly colored mushrooms uh, sort of spaced out along the ground. Uh, and they're all, they, they all are like contained in these little mounds. You don't see any of them like dotting the walls or outside of these mounds. Um, and then you see these, these sort of um, semi-transparent vines that are climbing up the walls of this cavern. And then on the ceiling, you just see rows and rows and rows of little, well, not little, uh, probably two fist sized uh, pods, sacks uh, that are just, you can tell they're like, <laughs> gotta stop with this. They're, they're yeah, mm -hmm, that from the ceiling. God, I didn't think this through. <laughs> Shoga, is that what you talked about us uh, to us before we headed out? He's like, yeah, um, yeah. So, and he he sort of points. And he says, so do you see? Uh, do you see the the? We'll, we'll start at the bottom. Do you do you see the mushrooms? Yes. Uh, he says, so under all of those are corpses. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, what? Yeah. So uh, that's how they. That's their like life cycle. The the pods are filled with like really hot. Oh, we've already done this once, but like really hot water, like scalding, super heated. Well, I think it's water anyway. I've never like tested it. Um, but they. Do you see the little the little strings coming down from those pods? Yeah. And as he says that, you can see that it's almost. You thought it was maybe a haze from the heat. But in fact, it is that this, the air of this cavern is so thick with these little filaments drooping or dropping from the pods. Uh, and he says, so those are like super touch sensitive. And if something brushes against them, then they drop the pods, kill the creature, and then the creature's body is food for the next generation. That's fun. Isn't that dope? I mean, yes, it is actually yeah. pretty cool. And again, poor, poor Shogun, his roller coaster is like, yeah, oh, we have to go through there. I forgot about that again. Mm -hmm. Also, um, after this trip, I will personally make sure that um, you are compensated in a way that's helpful for you. Oh, do you want to do you want to rock? <laughs> um, you know what? Actually, he will take one because he's yeah, like, wow, a real Volca. Whoa, they're heavy. Yeah, like, right. They're really, really dense. Yeah. They'll always Thanks. remind me of you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he definitely doesn't get it, but I just did and it was funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he'll put that in his, you know, in his, in his uh, pocket. Uh, and I just sort of look at y'all like, uh, what's next? <laughs> I have nothing for this. Anyone? <laughs> um... It's gonna kill Invicta to do this, but Kosa. Mm -hmm. Can your spidery leg things get you over and see a way or up high to see a way through this? Uh yes, but hold on. Sorry, it just sort of above game. The ceiling is covered with uh Ouch We're gonna call them pods. Yeah, ouch yeah. gushers. Here in the <laughs> yes, yes, it is. How are the outside walls? 
Outside like, walls are mostly clear. You do see some of the the tendrils, the thicker tendrils and yeah. vines, which are sort of they're all connected to the mushroom mounds. That's sort of the middle phase of the life cycle where they creep up the walls yeah. to get to the ceiling. But it's not nearly as thickly covered the walls as the ceiling is. Okay, um, I can attempt a wall situation, but this whole room is very bad. <laughs> so what? can you do to uh, pop the gushers so they gush without a dot? Hey, it's like gush puppies, but the other way where you are the, the puppy. I don't have a plan right. for this. <laughs> I just None don't. None of us had a plan. That's so, the problem. Pasha guppies? No. Yeah. No. Pasha guppies. No. Wouldn't that be push guppies? Yeah, so the top is the push because that's where the string is. And then the bottom with the mushrooms is the guppies. And why are we pushing guppies? Well, we could try to get them to, I don't have a better way to say blow their load. Uh, <gasps> either way, we've got to trigger them or kill them. So that's on you. Okay. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Yes. I had to stop because I almost called myself Captain. Admiral Silent 919. <laughs> she stops and she thinks about it. And she tells everyone to kind of stand back. And she's going to put a little like, <laughs> like a shield is going to come out from her chest. And it's like, of course, guided from her hair. But she's going to use her hair over the pieces to like throw things to try and trigger them. Oh, interesting. Okay. And sort of but just she's as gonna you go. She's going to create a shield like, between them. Okay. All right. I'm into this idea. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, that, that's a fine plan to clear out a path uh, as you go by throwing things, hitting the filaments ahead of you, letting them drop in front of you. Yeah, I love it. Uh, all right. That'll be our pool. Remember all of you, uh, if you have things that you want to toss in to help Sila, you can use those plot points to create assets for her. Uh, but yeah, this is, where are we now? Two eights and a six, right? Yeah. Um, I will throw in a plot point because now I've got four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it, I did it again. I got to roll. So I got a 14, but I got to roll. No, I don't. I was going to say, I got to go roll, roll one more D6 for your corrupted uh, stress, Sila, mm. but uh, even if I rolled a six on it, it wouldn't change my total. So I'm, I'm donating a, a D6 of, I'm sorry, a D8 of survive for my plot point. To uh, so goal. so what your plot point will do, will it'll be if you want to like, uh, how are you helping Sila out? Do you want to like create an, uh, or do you want there to be an object that is helpful to her? Do you want to do something that is going to aid her? How do you want to, uh, what is it that you want to do? Because usually what we, what this asset creation is, is that you're making an object or, or a person, I guess, but uh, in this case, probably an object uh, narratively relevant so that it gets a die of its own. How about this? Excited. And, and in, a, in a show of trust from Invicta, she lets Sila take her Aventura blade and use it like a scythe, like a like a machete, oh. as she clears out these pods. Okay, because the blade yeah. is sharp enough to break them. Sure, sure. We're behind the shield, and right. she lets Invicta or she lets Sila use like her hair as, as a handle mm -hmm, on her blade mm -hmm. to kind of reach out and poke them as we go. Wow. That's, that's huge. Uh, handing over teamer. that blade. Uh, all right, so that'll be a plot point. And your Aventura blade asset is a D8 standard, right? Or is it a D6? Um, I don't remember what it's a D8. It it's, it's a D8. It's a D8. Okay, so Christina, you can add a, a D8 for the dagger, if you would like, to your pool uh, from, from Invicta. Is it just one plot point to create something that'll only last for the scene? Uh, for this little series of encounters and doom pool, yes. Normally, it's, it's it'll be one to create it, one to let Sila use it. But I'm nixing that second one because of the way we're doing the doom pool. So, um, what's the what's the flora look like around here? I would like to try to weave uh, just a super temporary like splash guard. 
Oh, sure. That hot water. Just, I just want to make sure that uh, the admiral isn't getting hurt while we're kind of like bulldo- bulldozing our way through. And if I can like create something for the group. Totally, totally. So you could get actually that same uh, species of of uh, bush or shrub that Eli used to tie off the things. They're all of its branches are super sturdy and they're everywhere now that you're past the, the sort of rockier portion of, of the path. Uh, so you could, you know, cut off a few a few branches of that and weave together a shield, yeah. Or can, a I, can, can I uh, press gang Bertrand into like helping me weave it quicker? Absolutely, because Bertrand has definitely been with you the whole time. The whole time. The, the whole, whole time. time. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, it is, I will admit this freely to everyone in this Zoom call and in this channel right now. That is my biggest weakness, I think. As a GM, I never remember the NPCs who are along for the ride. You're golden. <laughs> Same. Same. <laughs> um, all right. So yes, absolutely. Bertrand will help you. You know, get those, uh, clear them of, clear them of uh, any any leaves, leaves or whatever that are on them, and and you can weave that right up. All right. So Sila, if you would like, that is another D six that you can add to your pool. Uh, so it's a D eight and a D six from the assets that your party has lent you. Uh, and it is a fourteen. Is the number that you need to beat a fourteen. Okay, so I am going to use Monsagene because so many of these features have to do with my Android adjacent nature. Definitely. Um, I'm going to use Fight because we are fighting to survive in a world with our darkest power. <laughs> Sorry. Um, from the Highlander, it's Queen. Oh, it's I, oh no, 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 I got okay. it. Uh, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting it. It was great. <laughs> What did you get? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so then I'm going to use power. Yep. And then I, of course, I'm using my weaponized braids. Of course. And then I have the D6. Oh. And a D8 for the for Invictus Blade, if you would like. I got a nine. <gasps> I didn't have your window open. I didn't see it. Uh, no hitches. So that's good news, I guess. Uh, but unfortunately, I think what happens here is, let's see, what was my effect die and what is your effect die? Oh, okay, that's good. That's very good news. Uh, so uh, your effect die is- too close to the sun. I think so, yeah. Uh, so you get a little overzealous uh, as, you, as you're cutting through and, uh, and you, get, you get splashed a couple of times. Uh, so you're also gonna take a D6 of injured. Uh, to get through, but you are able to uh, clear a path for the crew through the through the uh, the cavern of Scalders. It happens. It happens. Yes, uh, and you all make it make it out the other side, and you can see that you are mere steps from the Caldera now. <clears throat> you can actually see it, and you hear a sound coming from over the lip of the of the caldera of the top of this volcano it sounds like well it sounds like drilling to be honest mechanical drilling and you can see what is either dust or smoke being kicked up from inside the caldera that is mere steps away and that we shall discover next week because that's all the time we got this time hmm. hey thanks so much for hanging out everybody this was great we managed to to summit to the volcano uh the you all did you all did quite well i was really hoping there's cool mechanics that i get to play with uh with a doom pool if i start getting really high tier dice in it uh like i can spend i can take two d10s out of the doom pool to force you all to split the party uh so like weird no. stuff like that that we didn't quite get to because you all didn't fail enough for my taste uh i mean for my pool i mean for no Fair. there's no good way to say that uh <laughs> But you all did very well. I loved the teamwork. It was it was great, uh, and I had a blast. We are we are running up on our end time though, so we should get to outros so that everyone can know uh, what everyone is up to, where they can follow you, where they can catch you doing other stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's go in reverse order from the intros, which is a test of memory for me. But I'm pretty sure that means that Michael is first. Hello. Yes, I am first. Um, so hello, my name is Michael Sinclair II. Um, uh, also, Michael Critz everywhere on uh, Twitter and Twitch. 
Um, I have games on uh, Friday, second show, second star to the right show, which is this Friday and every other Friday. Then um, I have Let's Get Wild Mount with Critical Bard. I think it's our final show this, it's a finale, um, not final show, but finale. Uh, this Saturday, and then I have Faith Forge Academy, the podcast that comes out every Friday. Yeah. Other than that, I have content that just kind of comes out of the ether every now and then. The last thing I did was uh, a me talking about the um, Magic the Gathering set for the Dungeon and Dragon set coming out soon. So they spoiled some cards. I covered oh, about yeah. the lore, and I covered about how well those Magic cards are going to do in the game. As more of those come out, I'll be doing more of those. So just keep checking out my content. I love that. Yeah, that was cool. I saw you post that. I, uh, I'm interested to see them. All right. Uh, next up, I believe, is Tanya. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Tanya Seifotier, your creator, creative director, and Invicta. Um, you can find me and DJ Knight, because I think he's under next to me on the overlay. I don't know. Somewhere. Um, for Somewhere. For horror. So come by as we go back into the mist with Black Die Society. I play Fen, a draw dump here, Blood Hunter. And uh, DJ, when he gets his intro, uh, I'm sure will tell us all about Desmond, the character that he plays. Um, then Sunday, back for Rivals of Waterdeep. It is our third episode of our 10th season um, where I get to hang out with Eugenio. So none of these people on this overlay ever get rid of me, ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and nice. it's, yeah. And at some point, Sunday or Monday, I'll be streaming again. I don't know on my own channel beside this. But of course, come back on Wednesdays for Into the Motherlands. And uh, yeah, follow me on, on Twitter, everywhere at Cypher Tier. And uh, 24, 23 days left in the Kickstarter. We already hit $200,000. Amazing. Can't wait to update y'all next week on whatever that number is. Next up, Sabria. Yeah. Hi, I'm Abria Iyengar. You can follow me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. I stream all over the place. On Fridays, you can catch me for season three of Failed Save, where I am playing my dead character's sister as, and also sometimes my dead character. It's fine. It makes sense when I say it that way out loud. That's at seven o'clock over on Pixel Circus's channel. Uh, and on Saturday, every Saturday is the Gax Pack over on uh, Gary Con Live's Twitch channel at 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, other than that, uh, oh, so the Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood crossover on Critical Role called uh, Part One, Death and Taxes, just dropped. Uh, it was live on Monday and yeah. the YouTube video just went up today. So please go check it out. It's super fun. It's Ian Michelle Wynn Bradley, along with uh, Matt Mercer DMing. He's pretty good at it, if I do say so myself. Uh, Laura Bailey, uh, Sam Regal and uh, Talisa and Jaffe. And it was so much fun. And there's uh, costumes and it was just really cool. So please check that out and support it and uh, yeah. bug all of Critical Role for more so we can make more uh, episodes of it. Um, other than that, oh, Narrative Telephone dropped the week before. So please go check that out on YouTube, uh, on Critical Role's YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, it's almost time for a uh, Radiant Black, the Unleashed crossover episode uh, issue to come out. So uh, there's a comic book. Please go check that out. It comes out so soon. We've worked so hard on it. I'm yeah. so excited and nervous. So uh, yeah, go go check that out. Thanks. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, all of those things. Next up is DJ. Oh hi, I'm DJ the Knight. I'm forgetting names. DJ Knight. I play Akimba, the Mycelian Bio Priest here on uh, Into the Motherland. It's been a day. I am sorry. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be awesome. Obviously, we're here on Wednesdays. Tomorrow's gonna be Black Dice Society, where I play Desmond, a human ranger lycanthrope who uh, likes to have a great time uh, wrecking things because reasons. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be a blast. You guys are awesome. I'm still playing Elite Dangerous Odyssey and uh, probably gonna get into some Mass Effect Legendary Edition because all the reasons. And since we're mentioning awesome people, uh, Cypher and I are playing that with. The voice of Commander Shepard, if you play Male oh, Shep. Yeah, with Mark. Uh, Mark. Amazing human being, Mark. So Mark, I, get, if you like, I get to like, yeah. like internally, like fanboy every time we turn on the cameras and it's just like, no, don't do it. But it's still awesome. Uh, and I'm just happy to be here. You guys are awesome. Thank you I for, you know, or you, you, you community are awesome. I'm yeah. trying to adjust my pronoun usage. You're amazing. I'm trying to be like, you guys, when I grow up and be awesome, stay well, be safe. I love it. Last but most certainly not least, our host, Tanya. 
Wait, 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 wait a minute. You went already. I was staring at you, but Christina's the last but not least. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. What, what, Apparently I what am DJ the least just in your said? Mind. Hey. <laughs> it's been a week and it's been a day. I'll allow that one for you, no, sir. That's not I know that true. I will not allow. Hi. Blind us uh, with your glory, Christina. Blind us with that gloriousness. My name is Christina Ariel, and you can find me here playing Admiral Sala 919, which I enjoy and love with every fiber of my being. But you can also, what can I talk about? Oh, please go to the Star Wars official Star Wars YouTube or starwars.com forward slash the higher public and watch the new episode of Star Wars The Higher Republic Show. It's episode three. We're gonna break down the new comics that came out in this last phase and yeah. make some announcements about the next phase. And there's something really, really cool that happens. So go watch it, give it a thumbs up, tell you, I don't know, share it, be really nice about it and uh, enjoy it because I love what I do and I really hope that you'll support it because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And that's a whole vibe. And thank you. I hope you all have a great day. Yeah. All right, and very quickly, I'm Eugenio. Uh, I've been your storyteller. You can find me on Twitter and here on Twitch, DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, I, speaking of Mass Effect Legendary, it's all I do anymore. Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, I am doing my first ever playthrough of the series using Legendary Editions, so come hang out. We're having a delightful time. Uh, we are, what are we doing? I don't know, we're still in the first one and not very far in because I'm overwhelmed by the lore and I love it. Uh, what else? Sundays, uh, I'm with Tanya, has already mentioned, Rivals of Waterdeep, uh, episode three of our 10th season is gonna be on Sunday at one Eastern, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, Mon this coming Monday, we are not having a Quartz of the Shadow Fae if you've been hanging out with us on Mondays over at Cobalt Press because it's Memorial Day here in the States. Uh, so we're taking this week off of that. Uh, and then I stream, like I said, on my channel on Tuesdays and Thursday afternoons. That's me. That's all of us. Thanks so much, y'all. That Kickstarter is out there. We Oh, I haven't checked it since the beginning of the show. Where are we now? Let's see. Because uh, we got to do a number announce before we go offline. Looks like we are currently at $202,906. You all are amazing. Uh, I can't wait to, to see where that is next week. Thank you all so very much. We will see you all next week for episode seven of season two of Into the Motherlands. Let's find out what's in that volcano next week. Same time, same place. Thank you all so much for being here as always. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please get vaccinated as soon as you can. And happy gaming, y'all. Um, quickly before we go though, oh, yes. Ooh. Um, in case you didn't do see it, no, 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 it's fine. I jumped in. Oh. One, we're we're rating. I am Brandon, and two, That's if you forgotten. didn't see the Kickstarter update that was made by oh, me, oh yeah, uh, peep this because the face, that handsome face that you get to see every Wednesday and Thursday, and on his channel every other day, uh, they have already modeled DJ Knight for our minis. That's right. I'm going to show you, you my good phone oh, screen, I am so excited about it. I'm... Dang, handsome. Yo. Stop it. That's so good. It's so beast. I've never dope? seen a 3D modeling of my head, and it it just feels like yes. It's so cool. I am excited, yeah. to say the least, because mm -hmm. I have never wanted a mini more in my life. I like. <laughs> I have issues feeling like I uh, like me on occasion, like facially. It's like, nah, you, you, all right, bro. But like looking at that is like, oh, that's a pretty man. Feels yeah. good. Yeah, you are good. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Yeah, it sir, is. sir. There's sure. a reason I greet you and say that you are handsome when I come in your stream. I'm all not I'm being weird. On occasion, like I feel like everybody has that day where they're just like, eh, that's right. true. Yeah. So oh, no, I, I have those days on occasion. But like looking at that, it's just like, yo, there we go. There, <laughs> big screen. You're on big screen. Go. Look at that. That's it. it. Uh, what good. a perfect, I'm loving this, just this image composition that we're ending on today. I'm a big fan of this. Heck yeah. <laughs> I and love there, it. Thank you all so much. This is awesome. And there's a reaction of DJ looking at the DM when he couldn't tell you right what it was. <laughs> he said it while I was live. And I'm like trying to like keep a straight face. I'm playing Elite Dangerous. I'm in a spaceship. And then I had to look at that on the other screen. Like, really now? Like, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen a wow gif of the dude in the wire where he's just like, yeah. And the camera's like <laughs> circling around him. That's how I felt internally. It's like, I love what? it. You kind of love it. There's a part where you kind of go peek at you for a second and then like full out excited. <laughs> <laughs> was like, ah. I love it. it I it, love it. Yes. That is that literally is my brain like calculating as I'm looking at it. Like, nah, that can't be what I think it is. That's what I, wow. That's actually what I think it is. Okay. I'm here for it. It was.
See, Cuddle Ducks was right. there. It's like, oh, that's what DJ was reacting to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. That's yep. it. All right, for real, we're really leaving. We're gonna go see what <laughs> Brandon's doing. Let's say hi to Brandon. Yeah. See y'all next week. Be well. Good night, everybody. Bye.